Welcome to VMware Explore 2022 with the CTO Advisor Studio. Come on in and consume some content. Welcome back to our coverage of VMware Explorer 2022. The massive CTO Advisor Studios next to our Airstream. We've been having incredibly fun conversations, challenging conversations, and I have one of my favorite people in VMware, Amanda Blevins, VP in America's CTO yep. of VMware. Welcome back to the show, Amanda. One of my favorite shows, if not the favorite show. I appreciate <laughs> it. But you know, we, we're going to get right off, right off the bat. Amanda, you sent me a DM of a picture <laughs> that both, you know, me and my bro uh, my brother Kedar is behind the camera, and he's yeah. going to want to want to know the answer to okay. this because we, okay. we both we we both had the same question. <laughs> Why in the world do you have such a ridiculously big air compression? Well, because when I was younger, it was okay to put a vehicle on jack stands and crawl underneath it and reach up there and do all sorts of work on it. And now that I am not younger, <laughs> if I try to do that, I can basically not move, right? <laughs> so now I need to have a lift so I can just, you know, walk underneath it, do a few things for a little bit and walk away, <laughs> right? And have a good time. And you know, so I need a shop that's laid out where I have a work area where I have an area to storage you know, vehicles because my partner and I have a problem. We just keep purchasing them in various states of running and not running. So we have a lot of projects everywhere. And um, I also have a little OCD where I like things a certain way and I like to be clean so it can't be too cluttered. So you know, just a combination of want to be able to expand for the future. You know, I still have a lot of life ahead of me so I need more room for future toys and then to be able to organize the, the other stuff well. So, last question about cars, and I promise we're going to get to some technology. <laughs> we can talk other about than cars, cars. Car, tech, you know, cars are technically technology. It's a so lot of tech now. We're, we're, yeah. we're having the conversation. Yeah. What's your favorite new tool, or what's your most needed new tool in the shop? Definitely most needed is a drill and a drill bit. So. Uh, we're mostly my partner, but we got this um, 07 Tundra, and it was, you know, pretty inexpensive buy, especially during the pandemic. And it was lifted and whatever, but people tend not to maintain vehicles like that. So uh, completely replace the suspension with like a three inch lift kit, you know, replace the I don't think these brakes have ever been changed or pulled off. Wow. And like did like a whole like, you know, stop tech kit on there. Um, and then drain the fluids, which I don't think have ever been replaced or have in the last hundred thousand miles. So I had to do that. But as she was pulling some stuff off, like the transmission pan, well, there's like 12, 14 bolts or something. Three of them got stuck. Not, not just one, not just two, but three. but three bolts broke off and got stuck. And so, of course, it's like, you know, when you pull up the transmission pan, there's not only you know, a bunch of gears, but there's a bunch of electronics, even back in 07. So I'm like up in there with my drill and my drill bit that's, you know, the size of, I don't even know, it's very small because these are not big bolts. And so I'm like trying not to rub any of those wires or whatever. And luckily, I only had a chance to do one because I had to come out here pretty early and been here almost eight days, I think now. But I only got a chance to do one before I came out. But luckily, I didn't need like the reverse drill bit. I didn't need a tap. Like just enough vibration and heat drilling into the bolt pulled it out. So hopefully, got the vice grips on it, took it out. Hopefully, the other two are very similar. Hopefully, they're all the same. <laughs> you don't have to go back and get a reverse drill bit. Oh, and all it's that. Uh, so I expensive. Hate it. When when I when I worked on cars and it's not, I haven't done it since I was a kid. Yeah. One of the worst experiences is having something break off Ugh. and you don't have the proper tools oh, to worse. get it off. Worse. That back when I lived in Chicago, everything would always break, right? Because it's, it's cold. It's, that's, that's, on that's what it from did. All that yeah. salt. And so in Colorado, it's not a very common issue, but of course, three of them, not one, not two, but three. So this is not, uh, I, I think there's parts of this story that resonates yeah. with if you're. Part of enterprise IT, enterprise infrastructure, and cloud cloud building, 
there's this frustration that we have just across the different environments. You know, we move, you know, we read these, these developer level publications and they talk about abstraction, they talk about moving the workload from one environment to another, and all I think about is the complexity yes. of making that actually work. Like, yes. yes, the, the, yes, Kubernetes is sweet. I can just take my, uh, my thing and put it in one Kubernetes distribution and move it to another distri Kubernetes distribution and it works, more or less. That, in the POC, sure. Yeah, in the POC, <laughs> sure. Yeah. But behind that, there's somebody deploying the Kubernetes distribution. Yeah. vSphere, as simple as vSphere is, as simple, I can take a VMDK, more or less, from one environment, bring it to another environment, few button clicks, it's back yeah. up and running. Yeah. But somebody had to make that happen. Right. So my argument on social media and my peers and analyst community is VMware is out doing that dirty work. Yeah. That work of yeah. making that underlay normalized so we can go back and lay back the tools I'll, I'll be the proxy for my peers in the industry. They're like, nah, that's not VMware. That's not what they do. Uh, they need to be focused on the developer. They don't have a close enough relationship with the developer. They're, they're just in their own business. They're not talking about the right part of strategy. Hmm. Would you push back on that? I would push back on that. Like, you know, we'll talk about Tanzu application platform and things like that that are built for developers. All of our secure software supply chain work for developers. But a lot of our portfolio is to make the developer and admin or operation relationship and experience so much better, right? So if I'm a developer and I do want to deploy container-based workloads on Kubernetes, and I have an IT you know, organization that has governance and security requirements and privacy and everything else that I have to follow, if I just go out and do it on my own in a public cloud or something else I deployed, I'm probably not meeting those requirements, right? So then either I do it myself and then IT looks at it and says I have to redo 70 things, or I can have a better relationship with my cloud operations folks and they can put all that in place for me and give me advanced features like networking, still hard, you know, still hard with Kubernetes, even more difficult. Now we have containers that need to be exposed through service ports. So how do we encrypt that traffic and all those things? And that is what VMware is solving, right? With Kubernetes built into vSphere, NSX, out of the box supports you know Kubernetes load balancers. We have NSX advanced load balancing, Aversi's applications, Tanzu service mesh to secure and encrypt traffic across multi-cloud applications. So it's about yes, we need to help the developers. We are a company of many, many, many software developers, so we know something about that. But it's also about helping the cloud operators and the relationship and the experience between the two teams. So let's talk about you know kind of that cloud operations portion of it. Yeah. I have this saying that enterprise IT is cumulative. Accumulative. We don't get rid of anything. No, no. Like the, you know, I, I've gone <laughs> still mainframes. Yeah, I, I've gone <laughs> environment. There's mainframes. There's AIS. There's Solaris. There's HPUX. So there's some sort of vac system. There's, there's some type of vac system. There's AS four hundred. Right, right. There's we're hoarders. Uh, you know, you cover your ears. There's vSphere going back to vSphere 5.5. 5.5 is still it's, out it's, there. There's a lot of vSphere 5.5 yeah. in, in a lot of environments. Yeah. And then on the flip end, there's Kubernetes. There's right. OpenShift. Right. There's uh, a Pivotal Cloud Foundry, uh, like Pivotal Cloud Foundry proper, not TAP, right. but Pivotal Cloud Foundry. There's Spring. There's just there's serverless. There's Google. Yeah. There's yeah. just I have all of the I things. I have hundreds of services and each hyperscaler to choose from. Yeah. So when you're going in and you're talking to other CTOs at customer sites yeah. and they're telling you, Amanda, I hear all of this about Tap 1.3. I, I love the idea that I can automate the discovery and cataloging of APIs. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. But how do I connect? that to my AS400 <laughs> that's still running my mission critical right, the most money un earning, earning application. Yeah, yeah. And so we have a, a bunch of super smart folks in our Tanzu Labs division that you might be familiar with. And they're the folks that for 
decade more have been helping people rewrite, refactor, modernize their applications in the environment. So even if you know the organization is not interested in migrating off that AS400 or something, they do have the experience of helping to connect back to those mission critical systems that the business does run on. And that can be, and you know, and so then that migration can be done in phases. When folks do start to refactor where they have to to be able to migrate off those systems, they'll take that monolithic application and in chunks start to modernize it, pull out a functionality, now it's a container, functionality, now it's a container. And so it can be a slow and comfortable process rather than something terrifying where you're pulling the plug. So let's talk about the complexity of like, all, VMware can't do everything. No. I talked to Victorio right before you, yeah. and I say, it sounds like, Victoria, it sounds like you're boiling the ocean. Like it's yeah, yeah. all this stuff that needs to happen over the course of the next couple of years, VMware can't do all of right, that. Right. Talk about whether it's open source or partners, how is VMware making that real? Like when someone says, okay, okay Amanda, I hear you. Yeah. That's awesome, come make it happen. Right, right. You know, it's one, we have to ask, you know, who are your strategic partners, right? You know, or is your strategic partner in public cloud Azure and Microsoft, for example, you know? Do you, do you have a big spend with AWS that you need to meet? Do you have a large investment in OpenShift? You know, whatever those things are, you know, is there a preferred hardware vendor? Is there an automation tool set you already, do you have Ansible in place, right? Like, we have solutions in these areas, but it doesn't mean that you always have to use our solution either, right? So if you've made a large strategic investment, you have people trained on it, it's embedded in how you do business, then we will complement that. We will add additional features. We will make it easier. We'll give you observability. We'll make it more secure. And so that way folks don't have to rip and replace everything. They can choose to add from our portfolio what they truly need. Sometimes they do replace, because sometimes they have three or four tools that can be replaced by one VMware solution, and that's good, but we don't require it. We want to be an and, we want to be the core platform, we want to provide value, but we don't want to make it more difficult on folks. So let's shift the focus of the conversation a little yeah. bit because I hear that from the CTO, CIO, cloud architect level, yeah. uh, people who understand that. But let's talk about the doers, the people yeah. who have to actually do the work. Right. If I'm a v, traditional V ad man and I'm watching this video and I'm thinking, that seems like the place to be. Yeah. If I'm a CTO watching this or CIO watching this, I'm thinking, that sounds great, I don't have the people. Right, right. That's, how do we bridge that gap? Like, if I'm a V admin and I've spent the past seven years of my career skilling up, getting my VCP, maybe even studying for my VCDX and learning vSphere, but there's, there's all this other stuff I have to right, learn. Right, right. What do I start? You know, Kelsey Hightower talked about it during the Gen session yesterday. I had a cross-cloud solution keynote with Vittorio, with Richard and Kelsey and I got to have a quick chat for a few minutes about it. And, and so I just want to summarize, quote him, I can't directly quote him, but he talked about how if you're a VI admin, you already have these skills. You know, like you said, we're collectors, we're hoarders. We already <laughs> have all this tech forever. We know everything. We know how all the systems work together. But specifically, if you know virtualization, you know the foundation of cloud. You know, if you know virtualization, you know containers, you know the concepts. And it's the same concepts can be applied, and then it's just a matter of learning maybe a little different interface, or a, it's used in a different context. So. You know, I don't get to be hands-on as much as I used to be, but a couple years ago, I was like, I'm going to learn Kubernetes. And I started with it built into vSphere. So I just had to go into vCenter, which I know quite well, and I just had to enable, you know, that workload cluster. And then I had a supervisor cluster, and I could create, you know, namespaces and, and other workload clusters, and I could start playing with YAML files to my heart's content. And then I had to learn things about networking and how do I expose this and so on and so forth. And so conceptually I get it. It's just a matter of understanding the mechanics to be able to do it. There's a control plane, there's storage, network, compute. Yep. I just need to know the language in which yes. Kubernetes delivers. Yes. And do, I, 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 I still know that, you know what, if I can't reach a, uh, I know the troubleshooting steps, if I, if one, with one workload can't ping another workload, yeah. 
I know the troubleshooting steps. Right, right. I think to, to reapply it to this new platform. Exactly, exactly. So there's a little couple different concepts, a couple different tool sets. That's the other thing we're trying to do at VMware is how can we minimize those differences? So you can use the same tool set to do troubleshooting, whether it's traditional workloads or public cloud services or containers, so you can see that network topology, so you can see how the workloads talk. And so that way folks don't have to continually learn and implement new tools. They can use the ones they're already familiar with and then as they have modern workloads or use other services, it's still part of that tool set. Amanda, I really appreciate you taking out the time of your busy schedule sitting here and talking to me about the 07 Tundra. You, if you <laughs> came for the Tundra, <laughs> then you should have stayed for the tooling around modernizing your cloud infrastructure, it's always a great time talking yeah. to you. If you want to learn more about the CTO Advisor, you can follow us on the web, thectoadvisor.com. If I missed a question that I should have asked Amanda, you can DM me. Uh, the entire VMware team is available to answer these questions, whether it's online, in the hands-on labs, the tools that the, the, the company has put out, Regardless of whether or not you're going to go with a buy a solution for VMware or not, if you want to learn more about cloud native, this is a great community to learn at it. Stay tuned for more coverage from Moscone Center, San Francisco, VMware 2022, the place where the conversation happens for cloud infrastructure.